Okay, welcome everyone to our New Testament survey. So with that, uh, we're going to be starting with New Testament survey. Is anyone joining us who was not with us in the last two hours? Looks like we have everyone from the first two hours here. Okay. Um, if if you were not with us, please just uh, post on chat or just let us know uh, if you're a new student. But welcome. Um, we will do a small course overview. Um, look at some of the things that. Uh, we'll be going over in this course, and then we'll get into the content as well. Um, let me just share the screen with you. OK, so um, through this course, we are going to be looking at the whole of the New Testament. Uh, and um, our goal is basically to get an overall picture of what each book in the New Testament talks about. Uh, so we'll have an introduction to the author of the book, uh, when the book was written, um, why the book was written, what the main theme of the book is, and some of the key verses, key passages uh, in the book. Um, we also want to look at uh, an outline of Christ himself as revealed in the New Testament. Um, and then uh, we learn about the covenant, the new covenant in Christ, uh, which is a covenant of grace. Um, and we look at the life and ministry of Jesus and how it applies to our lives um, as believers. So that's the objective of the course. Um, I've just um, written uh, three outcomes or three goals that uh, we'd like to see by the end of this course so uh, that each of us would get would have an overall picture of the New Testament narrative, so understanding how all of it ties together, that we would have a deeper understanding of what the new covenant is in Christ uh, that we are invited into and how it impacts our lives, and then uh, that we would be inspired to live as Jesus lived. So as we look at the life of Jesus, uh, that we would be inspired to live like him. Um, we will also do two assessments here, and again, it will be a multiple choice uh, assessments. I've given uh, two dates, February 26th and April 15th. So we'll have a midterm and a final. Each will be 50 marks, um, and it will just be a multiple choice exam. Um, I've also put on Google Classroom a rough schedule and uh, some more information about uh, generally student guidelines and things like that, especially for the online students. OK, so um, I think we can go into our content. Would someone like to uh, pray for us and before we begin? Okay, let's pray. Yes, please. Loving Father in the Jesus, we bless your name. We give you glory and honor. We want to thank you for this time. We want to thank you, Lord, for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you have given unto us, O oh God. We humble ourselves, Abba Father, to listen and to hear from you. And we welcome your Holy Spirit to open our understanding and our minds that we may know more from you, King of Glory. We thank you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you. 
so we'll just uh, go into a small introduction to the course for today. Um, if we um, if we finish early, then we'll uh, continue on Thursday. So our classes are Monday and Thursday. So we do uh, one hour each uh, day. Uh, so we'll start and we'll see how far we get. Okay, so um, we're going to be looking at just a small background to the New Testament world. Um, so between the writing of Malachi, uh, which is the last book in the Old Testament, and then the first book of the New Testament, which is Matthew, there's a 400 period, 400-year uh, period that has lapsed, OK? Uh, so Malachi is considered as one of the last prophets um, in the Old Testament. And the prophets were the people through whom God spoke to the Israelites. Uh, so when people wanted uh, to know what God was saying, it was they they were going to the prophet they were listening to what the prophet was saying so for 400 years god had not spoken through any prophets uh, and so this time is considered as the silent years uh, where there were no prophets there was no one who was speaking on behalf of god to the people of israel uh, but during that time there were other things happening politically, religiously, uh, although there was no prophetic revelation of who God was, there were things that God was doing in the background, uh, preparing the way for Jesus' coming. So we will look at what was happening during those 400 years, um, politically, religiously, what was happening, uh, and what was the situation into which Jesus came uh, when Jesus was born. Um, so 400 to 334 BC. So if we uh, read in the Old Testament, we know that uh, before 400 BC, so before the Persian uh, Empire took over, uh, there was the Babylonian Empire, who, which was uh, reigning over Israel. So the Re Israelites were in exile in Babylon. And uh, at that time, the temple uh, in Jerusalem had been destroyed. Okay, And so many of the Israelites were not even living in Jerusalem. They were living uh, in Babylon. Um, at this time, um, around 500, and let me just get uh, the dates right, 539 BC uh, is when the Persians came into power. And we read about this in the scriptures where uh, we read about Cyrus, who was a Persian ruler. He came into power and he uh, allows some of the Jews to return back to Jerusalem to start rebuilding the temple. Uh, so Cyrus uh, is seen in scripture as someone whom God put in power, uh, and God uses Cyrus to start restoring his people. Um, so it was during uh, Cyrus's reign that about, uh, about 50,000 Jews returned to Babylon. OK, so there was a much larger. There were about 2 million Jews still remaining in Babylon. So just a small number of people actually returned to Jerusalem. And they began to rebuild the temple there. Um, post uh, this time, uh, we can uh, we can also look at what was the religious implication. So uh, while the temple was being rebuilt, uh, we also uh, know that uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, all uh, there were several prophets that started uh, to preach to the Israelites and talk about uh, what God was going to do. Uh, and Ezra was one person who returned to Jerusalem, and he began to teach the people. So he was uh, like a priest to the people, and he was teaching them about uh, the Torah, or they would, he was teaching them from the Hebrew scriptures. Um, so for very long, the Israelites had not had that kind of teaching because they had been in exile. Uh, so 
right they, this was being re-established now their faith was being re-established and during that time synagogues were also set up so uh before there was only jerusalem and everyone used to go to jerusalem to the temple to worship that was the one place but now they started to have synagogues that were local places where people could come to learn the torah so there was still only one temple for worship but the synagogues were a place of learning uh, for the people that they could come to, they could learn the Torah in the synagogues. And so the synagogues played a very important role in Jesus's ministry, right? So when we, uh, we know that Jesus went into so many synagogues and he preached there. And then when uh, the disciples started to take the gospel to people, they went into the synagogues. So the synagogues played a key role in the spreading of Christianity later. Uh, but at this point is where synagogues were starting to be established uh, as local places for people to come and learn the Torah. And then in 445 BC is where Nehemiah comes in. He begins to rebuild the city wall. So uh, as of now, the Persians are ruling. Jerusalem is starting to be uh, rebuilt, the walls are starting to be rebuilt, uh, the temple has already been rebuilt, and there is some restoration of the Jewish faith as uh, as the priests are coming and uh, continuing the work in the temple, okay, and the synagogues are being established as well. Uh, after the Persian period, we have the Alexandrian period, uh, and this is where Alexander the Great uh, started to establish a Greek empire. So Alexander uh, comes from Macedon, which is uh, in, in Greece, right? So he came from there and started to take over large parts of the globe. So if you look here on the map, this uh, whole part is where uh, Alexander the Great established his empire, that is from Greece uh, till India, is where he had established uh, the Greek empire. Okay, and so this is called the Alexandrian period. So uh, Alexander's goal was to um, have everyone come under the Greek culture, everyone speak uh, Greek, and everyone to be um, to follow Greek rules, to follow Greek religion. That was his uh, goal because he viewed the Greek culture as uh, superior to every other culture. And he wanted to see that spread across the globe. And so he tried to take as many uh, nations as he could uh, and establish control over them. So uh, he defeated the Persians, right? And he took control of all of their land uh, in an attempt to make a worldwide empire. This time is where a lot of uh, people started to speak Greek. So a lot of uh, Jews also started to speak Greek because they were under the Roman, under the Alexandrian Empire. Uh, and Greek became the common language. So Hebrew was no longer uh, the language that they amongst themselves. Greek became the daily language in which they were conversing. Uh, and a lot of the culture also became, um, became normal for the Jews. So uh, that culture is called Hellenism. Okay, that's Greek culture. And uh, we will read a lot about Hellenistic Jews. So Hellenistic Jews were Jews who had uh, been influenced by this Greek culture. So they had their Jewish faith, but their culture was this Greek culture that had come in through Alexander. Uh, and because Greek became such a common language, uh, we see that so much of the New Testament then was written in Greek, right? The New Testament was written in Greek because that was the common language. So like English is today, Greek was the language at that time. Um, so post Alexander, uh, Alexander's reign was pretty short. He died only when he was 32 years old. So he established this great empire but he uh, it lasted for about 10 years. And after that, um, the empire was split uh, between 
rulers who were under him. Uh, so two of the major rulers were Ptolemy and uh, Seleus, and they were the two empires that were kind of uh, fighting over power, trying to establish power uh, over each other. So Ptolemy established his uh, reign in Egypt. We can see that uh, here in that the purple color, right? So he established his empire in Egypt, and he had power over this Palestine region, which was where Israel was, right? So before this was Alexander the Great, and before that was the Persian Empire, before that was the Babylonian Empire. Now Ptolemy is also from a Greek background, um, but he is ruling over Egypt, and he's ruling over uh, this Palestine region. That's from 324, 204 BC. Um, so uh, it was during his time that the uh, city of Alexandria was established. And Alexandria became a center for education in the north of Egypt. Uh, so uh, we read about Alexandria later on, which actually was a key place even in uh, Christianity, right? Alexandria became a uh, very important place when the church was established uh, later on. Um, so Ptolemy is the one who established the city, and it was one of the it was the largest city in the ancient world. Um, and also during this time, uh, the Hebrew scriptures were translated into Greek. Uh, so this became very important because uh, that is what the New Testament writers used. So a lot of the time when the New Testament writers are talking about what is written in the Old Testament, they're quoting from that Greek translation, which is called the Septuagint. OK, so it's called, uh, it's also written as LXX, uh, which is kind of to say 70 in Roman numerals, uh, because it is, um, there's a legend that 70 people translated the scriptures in 70 days. So they say LXX uh, for the Septuagint. Uh, so it was uh, during this time that the scriptures were translated and the scriptures became available to everyone in the language they were speaking. So that was also very important, right? Uh, the Jews had stopped speaking Hebrew. And to have their text in Hebrew didn't make much sense because they didn't understand Hebrew anymore. Uh, Greek was the language that they were familiar with. And so now they had uh, their, their, uh, their, um, their scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, in Greek. So after Ptolemy's reign, comes Seleucid, uh, the Seleucid uh, period, or Seleucid Empire, which is when the other side, so after Alexander the Great, Ptolemy and Seleucus were the two leaders who had taken over the empire. Uh, at first, Ptolemy had control over this uh, Palestine, Syria area, and then Seleucid took over. So this 204 to 165 BC is where he has power over uh, this region. And uh, he is uh, not very favorable towards the Jews. Uh, he's very against their religion. Um, and one of the rulers during this time was called Antiochus IV or Antiochus uh, Epaphanes. And what that means is that he viewed himself as uh, a revelation of who God is. Ep like Epiphany means someone who uh, is a revelation of something or someone who is a representation of something. And so he was, he considered himself as a representation of God. And he was completely against the Jews, uh, completely against their religion. And he wanted to establish uh, the Greek culture and Greek religion there. Uh, and so the Jews and their practices became uh, something that was very um, contrary to his desire for the empire. Uh, so something he wanted to completely demolish or completely destroy. 
Um, so this is uh, Seleucid was in the Syria region, and Syria had power over the Jews at this point. Uh, so what uh, Antiochus did is he went into the Holy of Holies. He went into the temple, sorry, and on the altar there he. Uh, set up an altar for the Greek god Zeus and obviously offended all of the Jews. But to make things worse, on top of that altar, he sacrificed a pig, which is considered unclean for Jews. Uh, so his whole goal was to uh, destroy the Jewish faith, destroy their practices there. But because he did this and he offended them to such a great extent, uh, there arose a revolt within Jerusalem. And uh, this revolt is called the Maccabean Revolt. Um, it was led by, um, by the Maccabean rulers who were Jews. Uh, so there was a priest named Mattathias. And he had uh, five sons. So there's Judas, John, Simon, Jonathan, and Eliezer. And Judas was the main uh, leader of this um, revolt. Uh, he was uh, really efficient as, uh, as someone uh, in warfare. And so he was able to lead people against this uh, empire, even though the Jews were very, very small and weak population compared to the Seleucid Empire, they were able to overpower them, and they were able to take over Jerusalem. And over 100 years, they started to slowly gain control. So we see here in this map, uh, from Jerusalem and Judea, they started to gain control over other parts of, uh, of the land um, of Israel. And, Israel and Syria, and then also Samaria. So Samaria was in between, and then uh, there were Israelites on both sides. So people from Judah on the top and below. Um, but during their reign, there was a lot of corruption because power flowed from uh, generation to generation within their families. Uh, and the following generations started to uh, take advantage of their place of power. They were just making money. They were not taking care of the people. And so their rule was not something that the Jews were happy about. For 100 years, uh, they were under their power. Uh, but some things that we see uh, during this time is that the temple was restored. So uh, after. Um, after the temple was desiccated uh, by um, Antiochus IV, uh, this temple was now restored by the Maccabeans. And temple worship began to happen again. Uh, but the problem was that the Maccabeans, who had established themselves as kings, were also controlling the priesthood as well. Um, during this time, when they took over the temple, when they restored worship, as was talked about in the Jewish scriptures, uh, is where this uh, festival called the Hanukkah was established, or the Feast of Dedication. So in John 10, 22, we actually read about Jesus being in the temple during this feast. So it became a feast that was added to the other feasts that happened in the Old Testament that God had established. This feast also became one that was celebrated by the people. It was not a religious feast. It was more like a political celebration uh, because uh, they had politically been freed from the Seleucid Empire, and the Maccabeans had brought freedom to them. Uh, so it was more like uh, Israel as a nation celebrating that feast. Uh, also during this time, the Sadducees and Pharisees became two groups of people that uh, that rose up when this the temple was re-established, when uh, biblical worship was re-established. The Sadducees and Pharisees became two groups of people. Uh, the Sadducees being more uh, also politically inclined, whereas the Pharisees were more inclined towards uh, religious, uh, like following religion, uh, 
completely, right? They were very zealous about their religious practices. And Sadducees were more on the also influenced by the empire, uh, having some political power as well. Uh, and then after the Maccabean revolt, uh, although now the Jews had control over this land, uh, because they were so corrupt in their leading of the people, once um, once there was a ruler uh, from Rome who came in from Egypt, and uh, his entrance into Egypt was actually welcomed because of all of the corruption that had happened because of Maccabean rulers. So his name was Pompey, and he was from Rome. Uh, he came in and he took over this whole region. He took over Judea. And uh, then uh, there was established under the Roman Empire, there were local leaders who were established uh, to kind of report to the Roman Empire on behalf of what was going on there. So they were governors. So Herod the Great, who was there when Jesus was born, was one of the people who was uh, appointed as a local governor, leader over the region, to report to the Roman Empire and to make sure that uh, whatever was happening in, uh, in that region was in accordance with the Roman rule. Um, so Herod was not actually a Jew. He is an Edomite. Uh, but he wanted to please the Jews. So uh, he, in 20 BC, started to rebuild the temple. Uh, and it took him over 80 years to rebuild because the Jews didn't fully trust him. Uh, so they didn't allow him to destroy the temple and rebuild it. He had to do the work slowly over time, uh, restoring different parts of the temple. But uh, in order to gain favor with the Jews, he rebuilt the temple. So when Jesus was ministering, the temple was still being rebuilt because they started in 20 BC. It was only in about 60 AD that it was completed. Uh, so from that till that time, they were still constructing or reconstructing the temple. Um, so under the Roman Empire, there was much more peace for the Jews. Uh, there was also the establishment of uh, a legal system. There was establishment of a commercial system. Uh, there was a lot of roads that were built across the Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire was really huge. Uh, and um, in this picture, we see just some of the regions that they had uh, here. But eventually, they actually covered a lot of this whole area, the Roman Empire. And so they established roads to connect their whole empire, uh, which also was a key uh, to the spreading of the gospel. Because of all of these roads that had been established, uh, the, um, the disciples and the followers of Jesus who took the gospel to other places were able to use these roads to take the gospel to other parts of the Roman Empire. Uh, so this is generally a picture of uh, the Roman, uh, I mean, of the political and religious situation between 400 BC till when Jesus was born. Uh, so I just wanted to start us with that background. We won't go into more detail uh, for the New Testament for today's class. We'll continue on Thursday. Uh, but just these 400 years uh, gives us a picture of how much turmoil was there in that in that place, right? That small piece of land that was between uh, Egypt and between uh, the northern uh, or between that Persian uh, empire, it was so in, it was at crossroads. And so every time there was a war between the north and the south, between Egypt and uh, Asia, the, uh, Israel would get caught in between. And so that's why all of these empires wanted to also establish their reign there because it was so important for trade. Uh, so it was a very, um, 
difficult period for the Jews to have so many different empires ruling over them, so many different uh, groups of people influencing their culture, influencing uh, their religion. Uh, so for themselves as an identity, uh, having their own identity, having their own culture was something that they had to figure out in the, those 400 years, uh, which is why the Pharisees came up as such zealous people, because they were trying to reestablish the Jewish culture. They were trying to reestablish what does it mean to be a Jew, uh, and what is it uh, that we should be following? What is our religion about? Uh, so in that zeal to protect their identity as Jews, they started to make strict rules about following the uh, following their scriptures to the T, following the Sabbath. All of those things became strict ways to protect their identity, their cultural and religious identity. Um, anything you'll want to share from what we covered? If not, we'll uh, just close for today, and we'll continue on Thursday. Any questions? Any? OK, if there are no questions, uh, what we'll do is we'll stop here. And uh, from on Thursday, we'll go into uh, some of the um introductory terms or some of the key things for us to understand as we look at the new testament so we look at uh groups of people that existed uh the different uh key figures that were present uh some things that uh will help us better understand the new testament as we go into it um we are ending early today um, but we'll continue on Thursday. Thank you so much. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you.